Hello everybody, it's Christy, your friendly digital technology librarian, and welcome to March. Uh, March is actually one of my favorite months because it happens to be Women's History Month. And this month I've got a ton of really, really awesome things planned. So if you happen to remember, please make sure that you subscribe to our social media sites. Um, I'll have lots and lots of really fascinating links posted over the course of the month. And I think that you'll find them really, really interesting and really, really useful. Um, and I also plan a ton of really cool video segments uh, like today's. Uh, today's Film Rec Friday is all about films based on real women in history. Now, these women run the gamut from entertainers to political figures to small town housewives. I mean, they really, really run the gamut and they're all really fascinating. Uh, I have some that are documentaries, some that are uh, fictional films based on real people, and I think the mix is a really good one, so I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find at least one movie that really, really speaks to you. Uh, so like with every week, um, all of these films are available entirely for free with the use of your Mylan Berlin, Berlin Library card, and they're available on one of our three services, which are, of course, Clevenet's Overdrive, Hoopla Digital, and Canopy. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to those recs. Okay, I only have one recommendation from Clevenet's Overdrive this week, but it's for a biggie. Now, if you are a fan of comedy in general, you 100% probably already know this person. Um, the movie is called Love, Gilda, and it is an extraordinary documentary about an even more extraordinary woman, Gilda Radner, who is this unbelievably brilliant, talented, incomparable comedian. I mean, Gilda Radner is just amazing. Now, she is probably best known as being one of the first performers in that very first Saturday Night Live group of uh, comedians. She launched that show into the stratosphere. Uh, her characters are even now uh, relevant. They're still talked about. Rosanna Dana, like, uh, like the nerds that she played with Bill Murray. Uh, she she's just an extraordinary, extraordinary human being. And, you know, her humor was very heart centric. Like she wasn't, you know, a comedian who based their humor on, you know, negative stereotypes or, uh, based them off of, um, you know, attitude or anything. She wasn't an angry comedian. She was just one of those people who you loved watching. You wanted to see exactly what she was going to do every week. And this documentary does such a phenomenal job of expressing who she was. Um, she was also married to Gene Wilder, uh, and they had this incredibly a uh, lovely relationship and that gets talked about as well. I mean, it really humanizes her. Um, in the end, she did pass from cancer and they talk about how this incredibly funny woman even managed to keep her sense of humor and try and bring light to the people in her life even when she was at the end of hers. And it's, and it's, it's just amazing how much you can see how she, what she meant to the people that they interview, that they dis, that they discuss her, you know, it follows from her early childhood all the way through. And all the time we get these little glimpses of her actual personality, because, um, this particular documentary, we get to hear recordings of her that she, she that she actually made where she was talking about her life. We get to see other comedians who came after her 
who talk about what she meant to them. And then when they're listening to her actually speak, you can see how much it affects them. Because for them, she's like the I Ching. She's like the epitome of what it means to be funny, you know, effectively funny. Um, and she's, she just comes across as a fascinating, fascinating human being. Uh, the other really phenomenal thing about this particular documentary is that we get a ton of, uh, footage from her private life that was never released before. So you get to see like her little antics. She was, you know, one of those people who was always on, uh, but not in like an annoying way, but just her primary joy in life was to bring joy to other people. And it 100% comes across like that. Um, in addition to those behind the scenes mo moments and clips that we get, in addition to um, the video and uh, audio recordings, we also have journal entries uh, that other comedians and people in her life read. So we get to hear her real words coming back at us. We get to see the way her mind works. And it, it's just a really enlightening film. You know, you it's, it's one of those documentaries that will make you laugh a ton, but will also really, it, it, it should make you cry. Um, because it's terribly sad. Like it, it's because you get to know her there. There is a real progression. Even if you're not at all familiar with Radner, I say, watch this just to see the life story of a really, truly lovely human being. Um, as I was saying, it's funny, it's sentimental, it's charming, it's just thoroughly entertaining, and it gives you a glimpse of the evolution of humor. I mean, really, truly, we see a period of time where humor and how it's portrayed in television is really at a point where it's shifting constantly. And for someone who was so influential from that particular time, the 70s, the 80s, um, I think this is actually like a really important film to see in general. So if you get the chance, uh, please check out Love Gilda. It is wonderful and you will not regret it. So on Cleveland's Overdrive, Love Gilda, excellent, excellent film. All right, moving on to our Hoopla digital recommendations. The first rec that I have from Hoopla is for a documentary called The Founders. Now, if you followed this uh, channel for a while, you probably already remember me saying I have never been a big sports person in real life. Like, I don't follow too many professional sports or amateur sports for that matter. I don't know the rules of all these games, but I absolutely love a sports movie. It doesn't matter if it's a documentary, if it's a feature film, for whatever reason, I totally get into them. And The Founders is no different. Um, the Founders is a movie about golf. It is a documentary about the 13 women who started the LPGA back in the 1950s. And if I'm perfectly honest, I have little to no interest in the sport whatsoever, but I absolutely loved this documentary. It was really interesting and it was incredibly inspirational. Um, there are only a handful of that original 13 who are still living and those women, they do interview all of them. And the humor with which they respond to so much of the difficulties they had is really, really impressive. Um, they are quite candid about some of the behavior they saw from the men's tour. They are quite candid about um, how they were treated in general by like the management of the different clubs that they were trying to play at. Um, but at no point does it ever seem like they're particularly bitter. I mean, that's a long time to have to uh, feel oppressed about what's tantamount to a game. Like, and, and, and then they, the fact that they talk about 
the way that they were treated and still are able to find the humor in situations. I just, I'm just so impressed by them all. Um, this is a group of women who really did just strike out on their own and they had to make the rules up as they went because they just got door slammed in their faces constantly. And I loved how this particular documentary was able to really express all of their different personalities because they all had different backgrounds. Their one unifying thing was they all loved this particular game and they just wanted to be allowed to play. And I mean, it's such a simple, simple thing. And um, like I was saying, I, I just found it so inspirational how they approached the difficulties and how they faced them at the time and how they look back on them. The other really fantastic thing is seeing these women and the arcs that they've gone through. Of course, in the 1950s, they were getting, you know, a lot of flack, a lot of abuse for just wanting to play a game and to hear, and they were able to hear reactions now, like other women who are currently part of that LPGA, like they, these old, older women are their heroes. They are people who inspire them to be athletes today. And seeing the women hear other women talk about them that way, it was just such a huge deal. And you can see that sort of pride that they, that those kind of comments really bring them. And it's, it's just, I don't know. I, I was very much affected by the end. Um, and then you get to see the reactions that they have when they go through like different um, memorials and different tributes to them. It's just very affecting. So if you are interested in history in general, whether it be sports history or not, if you are a huge sports fan, if you're not a sports fan, if you are a golf fan, if you are not a golf fan, I still think you can watch this movie and absolutely love it. Like I said, not a sports fan, but adored this documentary. So please do check out The Founders on Hoopla. Excellent, excellent movie. Uh, my next recommendation from Hoopla Digital is for a documentary all about Marilyn Monroe, and that one's called Love, Marilyn. Now, I think most of us are familiar, at least vaguely, with the public figure of Marilyn Monroe. Uh, but what this documentary does that's so wonderful is it takes um, all of these private writings that she put together, like two boxes of uh, private writings like diaries, poetry, letters, were found about 50 years after her passing. And these personal recollections are then brought to life by other performers, both male and female, who portray, perform these pieces of text. And it really creates this beautiful piece of art. I mean, whether or not it's Marilyn's voice speaking these lines, it's still her. But we see her from these different points of view. It, it's it's one of the artiest ways to do a documentary that I've seen. And I really, really loved it. Um, because these words are her own, because they're her recollections, because they're her opinions, we get to see a side of her that we definitely normally do not. Um, we get to see how much she really wanted to be a serious actress and not just this glam sort of sex symbol. I mean, she's an icon for a reason, um, but she was also very, very conscious of her own limitations. She didn't go out there thinking that she was some classically trained Shakespearean actress. She went out knowing these are my big selling points. I'm going to use these until I can figure out a way to be better. And so she always had this drive to try and be better so that she couldn't, she didn't have to rely on these other elements so often. And 
you know, while you're listening to her words, some of them are really funny and lighthearted, but some are really melancholy and you see sort of the ebb and flow of that um, with her writing. You know, you really get to see when something truly bothered her, when she felt like she wasn't good enough, when she felt like she wasn't being seen or heard and and when it had all been just like the image that she had initially sort of set up and she and her of course team had set up um the dramatic readings are from actors you will probably recognize uh and i 100 percent found those really fascinating um simply because some of them are totally unexpected uh but really well done so yeah, I, I would definitely recommend this for anyone who is a fan of classic Hollywood in general, but also people who are interested in um, women's history, people who are interested in um, iconography, uh, because that is a big thread in this documentary, like the icon versus the real. And uh, I definitely think it will make you find her character person much more relatable. At least I certainly did. Um, so if you get the chance, strongly recommend uh, Love, Marilyn, also on Hoopla Digital. Uh, my last recommendation from Hoopla is for a fairly ridiculous but thoroughly enjoyable documentary, and it is called Carol Channing, Larger Than Life. Um, I'm a huge theater fan, and I have been my entire life. So I, of course, am very familiar with Carol Channing, but if you are not, Carol Channing is one of those, um, speaking of icons, uh, iconic Broadway figures. She, it's even said in the documentary, anytime she played a role, it wasn't that role. It was Carol Channing playing that role. Uh, she was such a huge personality. She was comedic. She was charming. She was just an incredible, incredible performer, an American legend. Um, and she had a very distinctive singing voice, like super distinctive, um, that is even now lovingly portrayed in lots of different communities, whether you're from the theater community, whether you're from the drag community. She was huge in um, tons of different uh, groups of people, and she still is to this very day. Um, this documentary does an excellent, excellent job of showing the world how big, how bright, how effusive Carol Channing uh, was and is. Um, so what's really fun is that at the time that this was filmed, they were doing interviews with Channing. She was already almost 90 at the time and she was very like on throughout the whole process. And that's just sort of her personality. Like if you watch any interviews she's ever done in the entirety of her career, she's just always on. So it's this sort of consistent, um, consistent, what's the word? Expression of that personality, uh, that she's always had. So, and it does talk about the different roles that she's, she's had and embodied and sort of imbued into American theater history. And that's really, really fun to watch. It's really interesting to listen to what other people who are currently, uh, who are fans of her talk about and what they recall when they first met her, um, the persona and all of it, all of these little pieces coming together. So if you are a theater fan, if you love musicals, if you are interested in American theater history, especially, she is such a massive, massive icon that you definitely need to watch Carol Channing, Larger Than Life. Uh, and that is, of course, like I mentioned, on Hoopla Digital. Okay, my final two recommendations both come from our Canopy service. And the first of those is another documentary. This one is simply called RGB. 
uh, and it is all about uh, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, regardless of what side of the political line you fall on, she is definitely an American icon. She's someone who we are all going to be probably familiar with, uh, simply from headlines and from news and things like that. Uh, and this documentary uh, certainly does an exceptional job of expressing who she was. Uh, we, of course, just recently lost her. Um, but at the time that this was filmed and made, she was still, uh, still living. Uh, the tagline is an intimate portrait of an unlikely rock star. And, uh, that should probably tell you the tone with which this, uh, documentary is told. Uh, but what I really found interesting in particular is that it at least tries to sort of balance certain things about her. Um, uh, she was, of course, a justice with the Supreme Court, uh, but it, it really talks about from her origins in Brooklyn all the way up to her uh, career with the Supreme Court. It talks about her early childhood. It talks about her education, uh, meeting her husband and uh, forming their family. Uh, it talks about how it gives little anecdotal information, like how she always was happy to admit that she was a terrible, terrible cook, um, which I find really funny simply because she seems so with it. Like, uh, but like, there are still these totally normal things that just were not in her wheelhouse. Um, it, it even illustrates like friendships she had with other judges who you might not assume she was going to be super friendly with or whom, with whom she had regular um, debates, friendly debates with. I, I loved that about the documentary. It did really humanize certain elements of her life. Um, I think we are prone to seeing a lot in the political realm in black and white, uh, left and right, things like that. And this documentary does an excellent job of showing how there's a whole lot of gray going on in anything. Um, it wasn't always a fight. Sometimes life is just life and you can be friendly with these other people and have differing opinions. Um, because at the end of the day, what you want is what's best for everyone. Um, and I think this does a really, really fantastic job of expressing that both in regard to Ginsburg herself, as well as her political adversaries. Um, I really did like that a lot. I thought it was really interesting how they were able to portray those sort of like contrasting personalities. Um, but yeah, it's just a really entertaining documentary. It's one of those documentaries that has so much personality. And of course, that's in part because of RGB and who she was like, she was a woman with a ton of personality. Uh, but the way that it's filmed, the way that it's presented, like it definitely gives her that sort of rock star persona. Um, and it revels in that it's, it, it knows what it is and it, it's, it's not pretending in any way, shape or form. So if you are interested in American history, if you are interested in political, uh, films, if you are interested in um, politics, and if you are interested in just strong, interesting women in general, definitely check out RGB. Again, I really think it's one of those films that does a great job of expressing who a person is and sort of enlightening the audience to the big picture. Okay, so my very last film that I'm recommending is for one I've talked about in the past, but it's probably one of my favorite movies ever. It's a super small film. Um, independent, it, I don't even know if it played in any theaters near me when it came out. It is called The Prize Winner of Defiance, Ohio, and um, it's probably, probably still one of my favorite films, even within this set of recs. Uh, Prize winner of Defiance, Ohio is a biographical film 
based on the life of Evelyn Ryan, who was a real woman in uh, who lived in the 1950s in Defiance, Ohio, of course, and who managed to raise a family of, I think, 10 children, um, all based off of her intelligence for the most part and her ability to work with words. She had originally planned to be like, a journalist, jingle writer, kind of, kind of, um, advertising exec and instead ended up marrying, um, a man who had some difficulties in life. Uh, and so she left the working world to be a housewife and was, definitely, what's the way to put it, not living a life that she had expected. Um, it's really, really interesting to watch that sort, those sorts of moments of quiet desperation. The Evelyn Ryan character is played by Julianne Moore, who is always phenomenal. I am a huge Julianne Moore fan in general. But um, in this role in particular, it's so quiet. Her character is so quick with words, quick to come up with these quickie, uh, quippy jingles, uh, quick to come up with turns of phrase that will stick with you, ad copy that is still to this day um, looked back on. Um, and she did all of that um, with the mind to win prizes so that she could get extra money extra food, uh, extra necessities for her family. Because again, her husband had some difficulties. He did not have a well-paying job. He was an alcoholic. He was oftentimes sort of verbally abusive. Um, and just overall, like a very sad character. I mean, uh, her husband was Kelly Ryan and played by Woody Harrelson perfectly. I mean, Harrelson's also an exceptionally strong actor. Uh, and you, you, you absolutely feel for these two characters while you're watching the movie. Um, because both are essentially living lives of quiet desperation. Uh, because Kelly Ryan's life did not turn out the way he expected either. Anyway, uh, I digress. We see Evelyn entering these little, like, box top contests that are now just based purely on luck, but back in the 50s were based on certain kinds of skills, like come up with sales copy or ad jingles in order to help further promote these products. Uh, and she won a lot, <laughs> like a lot, a lot. Um, just trying to remember some of the different turns of phrase that she came up with. Um, travel safe, travel light, travel always with Samsonite. Um, which is, I think, still on their website. Um, that's a long time to keep certain taglines within company culture. Uh, but yeah, so her family was frequently in financial straits and she would manage to pull together enough winnings to keep them afloat for a little bit longer and a little bit longer and a little bit longer. And her story is just one that I found so affecting. Um, that time period in particular, you hear a lot of stories about women who were living lives of quiet desperation. And I think this one speaks so much to me simply because like I've been to Defiance, Ohio, like I know where that is. <laughs> the, the fact that I know the area, I know the region, like makes her even more real. Because, and because it's such a small film, I think you feel like that sort of melancholy and that sort of pain that she goes through and all the time smiling because she doesn't want her kids to know that this is not the life that she had planned on leading. I don't know. It was just, it's just one of those movies that I, I find myself coming back to every couple of years and still really enjoying watching just because the performances are exceptional. The storyline is really, really, um, uh, moving to me. And honestly, just because I, I find like the setting so familiar as well. So if you're looking for a quiet film that will definitely 
sort of reach in and move you, please check out the prize winner of Defiance Ohio. It's full of phenomenal performances, um, really strong writing. Oh, and gorgeous, gorgeous production values. Like, I know I mentioned that it was a small film, but the costuming is so really beautifully done because we see the time period from the 50s through, you know, quite contemporary times, you see like the clothes change, you see like the houses change, the way that landscaping and lawn work was done. Um, and I, I love like those little pieces of history coming to life in general, but especially in something like this. Um, so yeah, prize winner of Defiance Ohio on Canopy, exceptional, exceptional film. So with that, my first week of uh, women-centric Film Rec Friday recommendations is over. Um, I hope that you found something in there that you'd be interested in. Uh, I love all of these movies and they are far, you know, far flung as far as um, theme and concept and tone go. So like I said, you should be able to find something that speaks to you. Um, the rest of the week, uh, the rest of the month, I'm going to be doing some other sort of like women's history centric styled film uh, recommendations. So please keep, uh, stay tuned for those. As always, if you have any recommendations for films that you've seen that you think we should be watching as well, please comment below. Um, if you have any recommendations for future themes, I'd love to hear about those too. Um, if this, uh, rec video was of any use to you, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, and uh, hopefully we will see you again very, very soon. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Bye-bye.